Next one is from Casper Johansson. Uh, hey, Lars. Hey, Casper. I'm trying to make a cam for a model in Fusion 360. I want to see and see it. So another cam one. Uh, we will do some different ones. It's not all cam. Promise. Um, and um, he's using 3D ramp to, uh, to do this part. And you know what? I don't think... I should probably have had an image of this one, but I don't have an image of this one. Uh, mistake on my part. I am sorry I didn't get that image in. Sorry about that, Casper. Um, but I will show you um, another option. So what Casper is trying to do, let's get into Fusion. Let's get Fusion going. And let's just quickly model something up here. So I am going to model something up that is similar to what Casper is trying to machine. At least I think. Uh, so I'm just going to model. And I'm not constraining anything. So anybody want to yell at me for that, that's okay. You can do that. Um, no hard feelings. Everything should be restrained. But I'm not going to do that in this one here. I'm going to make a couple of tangent arcs here. Something like that. A line over. Get alpha line. Alpha line. That there um, and let's just make sure we get one like that 22 22 so at least it's somewhat looks like something um, so what what Casper is trying to do if we extrude this thing up is he's trying to machine a part that looks somewhat like that see how it's kind of like curve have a curve on it there right have a curve up around it like that and um, what he's using, that's probably a little tall, make it a little lower. Um, what he's using is the 3D ramp to, uh, tool path, but it's actually a pretty cool, um, pretty cool tool path. But the problem he has is when he's cutting this out of a sheet of something is that he actually wants some tabs in there. And the, if we go into the manufacturer tool button here, and we had a sheet like this, and we're going to machine this out of this. We'll leave that like that. Um, he's using the the ramp tool path, but it's actually, like I said, a pretty good tool path. Um, if we select that, and let's select the cutter. Let's go in and do. It says we're doing metric. It's like the five millimeter cutter here, something like that. Um, and whenever I do 3D tool path, so the the ramp tool path is a part of a 3D tool path, I actually just normally just hit OK and see what it gives us. Okay, so it gives us a tool path that actually looks very, very nice for this part here. We'll run out of flute length, but um, one of the good things here is if we click on this one here and we go to the ramp, it actually gives a little description on there. And uh, you can see that it's created a finishing operation that intends for steep areas, so that means straight area of walls down. Uh, close to the contour strategy tool path, the 2D contour strategy tool path. So what it does, if I simulate it, is, and you're going to get collisions, but it's ramping down. So it's actually kind of like just going further and further down, like a constant Z movement. Actually, if you click on the info tab over here, um, you'll see the info tab over here. You would actually see that it shows you that it's just constantly... The Z is just constantly going down in a ramping style. So if you're familiar with cam, um, that is kind of cool. It's just kind of like ramping down all axes um, at the same time here for the Z axis. Um, but the problem is that when you're coming down to where you're cutting it out of your sheet, um, like let's say you, if we turn the stock on, um, you will see that at some point we're going to machine all the way down and we would like some tabs on it to hold on to to everything so then the tabs are kind of like just in the end you can break the part out um, the ramp tool path is actually not the best for this the best tool path you want to get there Casper is go in instead what I would do is I would go into the 2d I was like the 2d contour we can leave the same tool here and then we're just gonna select an edge so we can just select around the edge there of the part and there is actually in the passes tab you will find that in here there is a um, no not in the passes tab in the in the geometry tab there is a tabs function if you turn that on you will actually see the tabs appear and you now have some control over these tabs so you can 
make them wider if you want to. Uh, you can make them a little bit thicker if you want to. You can position them. Uh, the, the difference is in here. So if I make them smaller, let's make them 25. It will actually distribute more tabs. So you can kind of see those. And what the tool path will do for this here, we will turn the turn the depths on. Uh, step down depths. I'm, make, I'm messing up between metric and inches here, but so what it will do if we zoom in is when it comes down to the last pass, it would actually kind of like lift over and and leave those tabs on there, uh, and then you can you can you can break it out. So the RAM toolpath is kind of cool, but it's it's under a 3D toolpath, and I'm gonna come back to that later. Um, I would actually switch over Casper and use a 2D uh, toolpath instead. Now the 2, 2D uh, contour toolpath will do a lead in, lead out on it. The RAM will not, so the RAM will kind of like never do that compensation. But um, but yeah, that would be my favorite toolpath for that. Would be the the 2D contour toolpath. Hope that makes sense. Hope that was hope that was useful. Casper, one, two down.